Welcome everyone in today's session on Cloudera tutorial. My name is Shubham and I'll be clarifying all your doubts about Cloudera Hadoop distribution. So without any further delay, let's look at the agenda first. So first we'll start by understanding the need of Hadoop distribution. Then we'll discuss Cloudera features and market share. Next we'll see how to download and install Cloudera Quick Start VM. We'll also explore Cloudera Manager, Hue and Parcels. After that we'll look at Edureka's Cloud Lab and we'll understand the benefits of using Cloud Lab. Finally, we'll look at Cloudera certifications and we'll discuss about required skills to clear the certification exams. So are we clear with the agenda guys? Thomas says yes. Saurav says all clear. Thanks for the confirmation guys. Let's move to our first slide. Basically, Hadoop is an open source distributed processing framework which is owned by Apache Software Foundation. We also refer it as vanilla version of Hadoop. On top of this vanilla version of Hadoop, we have various distributions of Hadoop like Cloudera, MapR and Hortonworks. Well, I have seen a lot of people have this doubt that why we need distributions. The best way I feel to understand this is using the example of Linux. There we have GNU Linux, which is the base, and then we have different versions of Linux like Fedora, Ubuntu, CentOS, Red Hat, Mint, Kali, etc. So you might be wondering what's the difference between GNU Linux and different Linux distributions. GNU Linux is the base version of Linux, whereas in Linux distributions, multiple functionalities and features have been added on top of GNU Linux. So each of this Linux distribution have their own set of features and functionalities. Same is the case with Hadoop distribution. Apache Hadoop is the base version and companies like Cloudera, MapR, Hortonworks took the vanilla version of Hadoop and added some features related to UI, security, monitoring, etc. And then they have released their own Hadoop distributions. On top of this, they are also providing commercial support for the respective distributions. So are we clear the need of Hadoop distribution guys? Now let us look at the features provided by Cloudera which makes them leader in Hadoop distribution. In March 2009, Cloudera announced the availability of its first distribution and Cloudera is the first vendor to offer Hadoop as a package. Again, Cloudera is the first one to offer SQL with Hadoop using Impala query language. Then Cloudera's distribution includes most of the open source platform distribution which includes Apache Hadoop, Apache Spark, Impala, Kudu, Edgebase and many more. Moving to the next slide. Cloudera provides support whether you run Cloudera distribution on your own server or on a hosted infrastructure services like Amazon EC2, Rackspace, Softlayer, VMware's vCloud, etc. Cloudera support will help you in installing, configuring, optimizing, tuning and running Hadoop for a large scale data processing analysis. Next, let's talk about Cloudera Manager. So Cloudera Manager is an administrative tool for fast, easy and secure deployment. It also helps in monitoring, alerting and management. The major benefits of using Cloudera Manager are automatic deployment and configuration. So over here you do not have to go ahead and edit those configuration files or start those script files. You can easily do this in Cloudera Manager. Then again it provides customizable monitoring and reporting where you can go ahead and create your own dashboards based on your requirements and then monitor them. Then it provides easy troubleshooting. So Cloudera Manager aggregates all the logs at a single place so that you can go ahead and search for the error or exception that you're expecting and then you can easily rectify them. Let me tell you something interesting. In the vanilla version of Hadoop, you need to execute CLI commands and write code to perform any operation, whether it's uploading a file to SDFS or performing Hive queries or creating a Uzi scheduler. But again, coming to Cloudera, it eases your job by providing a user interface where you can do all of this pretty easily. You can upload a file to SDFS, perform Hive queries, create Uzi scheduler by simply using the UI. We'll learn how to do these tasks in a while. But before that, let me show you the Cloudera's market share. Now, these were the reasons why Cloudera is the most prominent distribution in the market today. The Cloudera's market share is more than double as compared to MapR and Hortonworks. So as you can see in the image, the Cloudera's market share is $56 million, whereas the MapR and Hortonworks market share is around $23 and $18 million respectively. Again, moving to the next slide. There are many big giants using Cloudera distribution. We have just listed some of them like AMD, Accenture, Capgemini, Cisco, Deloitte, Cognizant, Couchbase, Docker, Dell AMC, etc. So now without wasting any further time, let's move to the demo part. So first we'll go ahead and download the Cloudera Quick Start VM and then we'll install it. So first let me take you to the Cloudera page. So this is the page where you can go ahead and download your Quick Start VM. Just select a platform. So over here you can select VirtualBox, VMware, KVM or a Docker image. So I am using VirtualBox which is my virtualization software. Then click on get it now. Then you'll get a list of questions like why are you downloading this VM, your first name, last name, business email, company, country, job roles job functions and phone. So once you fill all those details and click on continue, 
your downloading will start but as I have already downloaded the quick start VM so I'll quickly take you to the quick start VM so initially you'll get something like a zip file so once you'll extract that zip file you'll find something like these two files so once you double click on this file it will automatically open the virtual box and then it has the import virtual appliances so it will show you all the details like the name of the VM, the guest OS type which is Red Hat, then you have CPU 1, then the RAM is 4096. And again it will show you all the adapters like your network adapter, your storage adapters and etc. So once you click on import, it will import the Cloudera's quick start VM. I will not import it now because I have already imported it. So it will look something like this. As you can see in the image, it looks something like Cloudera Quick Start VM 5.13, which was the name of my Cloudera Quick Start VM. I'll start the Cloudera Quick Start VM. So once you are inside the Quick Start VM, you'll get a view like this. So let me go to the desktop. So in the desktop, you will have something called Cloudera Express. So you have to activate this Cloudera Express or you can say launch this Cloudera Express in order to access Cloudera Manager. But before this, let me show you the directories. So all the software components reside inside user, lib. And as you can see, here we have Mahout, we have Edgebase, Solar, then we have Hive, then we have Hadoop, you have Hadoop SDFS, then you can see more services like Flume, Pig, Skew. So you have all the services over here. So let me show you one more directory before this. Let's go to opt slash Cloudera and let's look at this directory. So here we have all the parcels which are residing. I'll tell you what are parcels. Just wait for it guys. And here we have all the CSD files that is custom service descriptor file that will reside. So I'll show you all of this in a while. and I'll explain you what are these. But I'm just trying to show you where they reside. Now let us go back. Now let me tell you something important. So before launching Cloudera Express, you need to have 8 GB of RAM and 2 CPU. So how you can do this? You first have to close or shut down your quick start VM. Then you can go back to your virtual box. Go with the right click and there is an option called settings. So go with settings. In settings, go in system settings and over here you will find base memory as you can see over here. So you need to increase it. Actually the required RAM is 8 GB but I have given it 12 GB because with 8 GB again, you'll face some lags and issues. So I don't want that. Then once you click in processor tab, you'll find the processors. So you have to make it to for your Cloudera Express to start. Once you do all those changes, click on OK and then you can again go ahead and start your VM. So then after this, you just have to go and double press on launch Cloudera Express. So as you can see, the Cloudera manager is already running in my VM as I have already changed my CPU and RAM. But you have to go ahead and do it. Once you do it, you can open the terminal and to start your Cloudera manager, the command is sudo service Cloudera SCM hyphen server start. So as you can see the command, this is the command and you can add start, stop or restart whatever you want. Go ahead and press enter as my Cloudera SCM server is already running. Now let me minimize this terminal and let me take you to the browser. So over here you have multiple bookmarks. Just click on Cloudera manager and it will take you to the Cloudera manager. By default the password of your Cloudera manager is Cloudera and the username is also Cloudera. So I'll go with Cloudera and then the password is Cloudera. You have various charts on the right hand side. So it's showing you the cluster CPU, cluster disk IO, then cluster network IO, SDFS input output, then you have completed Impala queries. So as you can see all those things guys, it gives you all the required details to monitor your cluster. And as I told you while taking you through the Cloudera features that you can also create your custom dashboard, whatever you want. And for that you need to go in the chart and then you can start here with the dashboard or create dashboard option. Fine, let's take a look on the left hand side. So on the left hand side you have Cloudera Quick Start. So in the Cloudera Quick Start you have multiple services that are running inside your Cloudera VM that is host, Edgebase, HDFS, Hive, Hue, Impala, Uzi, Solar and each of the service that's inside your Cloudera Quick Start VM. Now you can do two things. Either you can go ahead and start and stop each of the services individually. So I have first stopped my SDFS service. So 
as you can see it's very simple it will give you a pop out and then it will start some of the processes it will complete those processes and it's all done you don't have to go ahead and run some script files you don't have to go ahead and edit some properties all those things you don't have to do now as you can see here the stfs service has been stopped so i can again go ahead and start this service over here but let me tell you one more feature we have cloudera quick start where you can go ahead and click on this button and you can start all the services at once or you can go ahead and restart all the services so let me start all the services which will again start my sdfs and edge base i'll click on start meanwhile all the services are starting let me take you to the uh, terminal and will execute sudo jps command as you know it shows all the java processes or java demons that are running so let us take a look at those demons which are already running so as you can see the name node is started as you can see we have secondary name node over here we have node manager then we have history server so you can see all the demons that are running inside your system or you can say cloud era quick start vm let me minimize this for a while so for now i'll close all the services meanwhile the services are getting stopped let me take you to one of the service that is hdfs I went to all the recent commands, so the stop command still in progress. So let's wait for that. Meanwhile, let me tell you something. I have allocated this quick start VM 12 GB as I have 16 GB of system, but it's not as smooth as expected from this. Okay, let's go back to our Cloudera manager. So let me start just SDFS. Okay, so click on start. Okay, so once I have stopped all the services, now it's pretty smooth, I think. So you can see we have two commands over here start SDFS service, and then we have wait for name node to begin responding to RPCs. So now you can see the both the steps are completed. Let me close this. Meanwhile, let us also start the yarn services. So I have restarted the yarn service. We'll let this thing complete. Meanwhile, we'll go to our HDFS service. So just click on HDFS. So now you can see HDFS. There are lots of tabs popping up over here. So the configured capacity over here is 54 GB in which we have utilized 9.3 GB. So let me quickly take you through the HDFS web UI that is localhost colon 50070 and if we have used apache hadoop you will be familiar with this so here you have all the details about your hdfs this started timestamp then you'll get cluster id block pool id then you can also see the configured capacity dfs used non dfs used and then we have live nodes that is one because there is only one data node that is running so let me click on this live node again take you to the data node details and you can see this is the node or you can see the data node which is running then again what you can do you can go to the utilities you can go for browse the file system and then you can see the sdfs over here so as i do not have anything in my sdfs so it's empty but if you will put some files or you will copy some files to your sdfs then you can see it over here let's go back to our cloud manager then it's similar as we saw the home page you have some charts representing some of the facts about your hdfs capacity total bytes read across your data node then total bytes written across your data node then you have total blocks read across your data node all those facts and figures you can see here with the timestamps as well if you will put your cursor on it you can see all those details like total blocks the time the value the speed of writing now let me quickly take you to the rest of the tabs on the left hand side you can see the status summary then you can see the health history the time at which my data nodes were not good or you can say the health was bad then again the time at which my data node became good all those details you'll find here let me quickly take you through the instances so as i click on instances you'll find the instance that is running in the sdfs all those instances so you can see the data node 
and this is the host name the state it started and it's commissioned then you have name node that is active and you can again see the secondary name node which is there so you can see all those things over here then you have multiple things like commission state maintenance mode rack role group role types next we'll go to the configuration tab over here so now over here you can see all the configuration properties you have zookeeper service you have kms service you have object store services then the sdfs block size so the configured block size is 128 mb then you have default unmask enable web as sdfs so due to this you can see the localhost 5070 then you have checked sdfs permissions you have the codex compression codex which you can apply and rest of the details you can find over here and you don't have to again go ahead and edit those property files or xml files to edit those parameters you can easily change the values over here and it will be reflected in your sdfs now next is commands, so it will show you all the commands that you have executed in your sdfs as i haven't executed any commands so it won't show me any command otherwise you'll get all the running commands as well as all the recent commands over here next is charts library so basically charts library is something which will give you all the charts and details for your monitoring so it has something called blocks and files so it will give you all the details and charts regarding blocks and files then it will give you all the details regarding your data nodes how it is read the speed at which which the data is written or the speed at which the data is read all those things you'll find over here then you have events so it will show you all the events specific so you can go ahead and you can explore this because it has lots of things inside the dashboard and as i said cloudera provides you custom dashboarding as well so you can go ahead and customize or you can go ahead and create your own dashboard and work with it again you have cache statistics then you have audits and again you have this name node web ui which i took you through which is your localhost 50070 and then you have some quick links over here that is alert critical all so you can go through this quick links as well so in the tabs over here the first we explored cluster so in cluster you'll find all the services that are running in a cluster you can go ahead and you can explore each and every service because it has a good amount of services over here it has edge base hdfs hive hue impala then uzi solar spark scoop yarn zookeeper so all those services you can go ahead and explore everything in all those services then second you have host over here so it will show you all the hosts that are running there are parcels so we'll be discussing about parcels in a while guys just wait for a while now you have diagnostics which i was talking about so it provides you all the logs server logs event logs at a single place so that you can go ahead and you can see the errors and the exceptions that are occurring in your cluster and it also helps you in rectifying all those issues and errors as i have clicked on events you can see all the important events that is over here you can see all the log messages and you can actually expand any one of the event and you can see all the log messages regarding that and actually it provides you in a single place so it, it becomes easy for you to manage all the services and to find all those events that might have caused the failure so this is how cloudera eases your job right then you have audit you have chart as we already discussed that you can create custom dashboard over here you can look at the dashboard which is created and then you have something called admin section where you can again go ahead and create users alerts you can create a specific user account and then allocate them some roles then you have some settings so we'll go through this setting because we have to discuss about parcels over here we have to specify the custom service descriptor file but let's first go to hue and we'll look at hue so let me open hue so here's the hue service click on start and let's start it so now hue is running so we can easily go ahead and close it and let's start hue in another console and let's see the power of hue so basically hue is an open source web interface that supports apache hadoop and its ecosystem hue is basically open source analytics workbench for browsing querying and visualizing data uh, now the basic applications of hue it, it provides an editor for hive impala pig map reduce spark and any sql like service and it also helps you in creating dashboards to dynamically interact and visualize data with solar or sql it also helps in creating scheduler for jobs and workflows it also acts as browser for various jobs, SDFS, S3 files, SQL tables, and multiple mode services. So as you can see, when I'm selecting this database, I'm getting two things, that is Impala or Hive, so I can easily go ahead and execute any of the query in Impala or Hive. So if I'm clicking on Hive, you can see it's getting error loading in tables because I haven't started the Hive daemons. 
then we have SDFS browser. So over here, if you click, it'll take you to the SDFS browser and you can easily go ahead and drag and drop files over here. So you don't have to use CLI to write files to the SDFS or copy files to the SDFS. You can easily use drag and drop functionality. Now, once I'm dropping it down, you can see the editors over here. So you have Impala, Hive, Pig, Java, Spark, MapReduce, Shell and Scoop. Next, you have dashboard. So you can click on dashboard. So my solar service is not started right now. So I cannot show you the uh, dashboard. And then we have scheduler. So you can create Uzi workflow, Uzi schedule, Uzi bundles using this scheduler. And it's pretty much easy using Cloudera to create a workflow or scheduler. It provides you drag and drop facility to easily create workflows. Then you can see jobs over here. So it will show all the jobs that are being executed. So we'll explore Q in a while guys in our Edureka cloud lab because it's easier working over there as we have lots of files and data over there. So we can go ahead and we can explore Q in a much better fashion. So let me go back to the cloud manager. Now I'll quickly tell you what are parcels. So parcels is nothing but a binary distribution format that contains the program file along with the metadata required by cloud era manager. Now parcels are self-contained and installed in a version directory. What do you mean by that? It means that you can go ahead and install multiple versions of a given parcel side by side in your machine. For example, so basically the version of Spark in our quick start VM is 1.6. So if I want to configure Spark 2 because industry is now moving to Spark 2.1 and 2.2. So what I need to do, I need to install it through parcels. So for that, first what I'll do, I'll place my CSD file that is custom service descriptor file. So you need to go in administration, then click on settings. So now you have to click in this custom service descriptors. Once you click this, you'll find something saying as slash opt slash cloud era slash CSD. All your custom service descriptor files should reside over here. You can change this directory if you want or you can use the same directory which is specified over here. So you can go to this Cloudera website that is installing Cloudera distribution of Apache Spark 2 and you can download the Spark 2 CSD from here and then you can place the CSD in this directory. Okay. So now once you have logged on to the Cloudera manager server host and place the CSD file under the location configured for CSD files. Then you have to set the file ownership to Cloudera HCM Cloudera SCM with permission of 644. So you'll give the group name as Cloudera SCM and the username as Cloudera SCM. Next, you need to restart your Cloudera manager service. For that, as we already discussed, the command is service Cloudera SCM server restart. Then once you have restarted the service, you need to go inside your cluster and then go to the Cloudera management service. And then over here, you have to select the action as restart. So it will restart all the services that are actually executing over here. Once it is successfully completed, then what do you need to do? You need to install the parcel and in order to do so, you need to go to the parcels tab. Now you can already see we have lots of parcels over here. You have scoop Teradata connector, you have scoop NITSA connector, you have Spark, Kudu, then you have Kafka, CDH5 is already over here, Accumulo is already over here. So you need to first click on configure. So as you can see, the directory of parcel is this. So your parcel will reside in this directory. Then this is the repo directory of your parcel. It's also inside of cloud era. So here you have all the remote parcel repositories that are added. So in the remote parcel repository URL list, you have to click on the addition symbol, which will again add a new row and enter the part of the repo. Then click on save changes as you can see over here. And then once you go back, so you'll find the parcel over here and you can easily go and click on download button which will download the parcel for you and you can easily go ahead and manage parcel so you can download it, distribute it, activate the parcel so you can do anything from the parcels. So now that's it guys for our Cloudera Quick Start VM. Now that we have seen how to download and install Cloudera Quick Start VM and we have also learned how to work with Cloudera Manager Hue and Parcel, now is the right time to look at the Edureka Cloud Lab. So let me first tell you what is Edureka Cloud Lab. Edureka Cloud Lab is a cloud-based Hadoop and Spark environment that Edureka offers with Big Data and Hadoop training course where you can easily execute all your in-class demos and work on real-time Big Data projects in a fluent manner. You don't have to worry about the system requirements as you will be executing your practicals on a Cloud Lab environment 
This environment already contains all the necessary software that you require to execute your practicals. This will not only save your time from the trouble of installing and maintaining Hadoop and Spark on a virtual machine, but it will also provide you an experience of real time big data and Hadoop production cluster. You'll be able to access the Cloud Lab via your browser, which requires the minimal hardware configuration. Without wasting any time, let's quickly go to the Edureka Cloud Lab. So, in this My Lab tab, you'll find all the services that are present in Edureka Cloud Lab. It's Cloud Lab Manager, then you have Web Console, then you have Hue, FTP, Jupyter, Name Node Web UI, MapReduce Job History Server, and then you have Spark History Server. So, let's start with Cloud Lab Manager. So this is the Cloud Era Manager. This is how it looks as we have already seen in Quick Start VM. So let me first take you to the SDFS service. So as you can see the configure capacity, then you can see data nodes. So we have three good data nodes. Then it's failover controller. Then you have journal nodes, name node and host. Again, it's similar to your Quick Start VM. SDFS capacity total bytes read across data node, total bytes written across data node. Then total blocks read across data nodes, total blocks written across data nodes, all those facts and figures you'll find over here. Next, let me take you to the instances tab. So over here, you'll find all the data nodes that are actually running. So these are the three data nodes which are actually running right now. Then we have two failover controller nodes, which are these. And then you can see the journal nodes. So these are the three journal nodes. So this is basically for your high availability architecture. As you know, in high availability architecture, you have one active name node and then you have one passive name node. So these are the two name nodes. These are the general nodes, which are basically maintaining the sync between your active and passive name node. And then these are the data nodes. Again, you can see the configuration over here. So what is the configuration of your SDFS? So you can find all the details over here. Now you can also go to the commands, chart, cache, statistics, web UI. So you can explore all those options. It's as similar to your Quick start VM. It's just your Edureka Cloud Lab is fluent and you don't have to worry about all the system requirements. Let's go back to Cloud Lab Manager main page and it's similar like you have all the charts present over here so you can view all the charts. So let me take the example of Kafka. Let's go inside Kafka and if you know Kafka and if you're executing any command then you have to provide bootstrap servers or broker list address, right? So how you can target those address, you can target those address from here. Uh, you can just go to the instances tab and you can look at the host name. So you just have to copy this host name and provide it as the parameter for your bootstrap server or your broker list. Now let's go back to our my lab and let's open the web console. So this is the web console. Let me quickly log in. So first let me show you a directory. I will go to opt cloud era and then parcels so you can see uh, we have cdh over here so we'll go to the cdh and then let me show you all the files present over here so we have bins so all the scripts would be stored in bin so let me show you all the files within the bin so these are the files you'll find all the script files which you need like spark summit spark shell then you'll find hadoop then hive all the script files that are required then let's quickly go back press ls Sorry guys, I'm outside CDH. Let me go back to CDH. Press LS. Now you can go to lib. So here you will find all the required jars that you need to execute your program. And similarly, you'll find all the data that is required over here. Let's quickly go back and see in parcels. So we have Kafka. So we have installed Kafka separately. So you can see Kafka and Spark two parcels over here. So this is the local directory of the user. To copy any file in the local directory or to download any file from the local directory, you need to use this FTP server. So here I have to again log in. I'll log in quickly. Now you can see we have lots of files and directories over here. So you can go ahead and you can download any of the file. Just check this file and click on download. It will start the download as you can see over here. Then you can also upload a folder so you can use this upload file or upload folder option to upload. So just select on upload files and you can select any of the file that you require. Let me select an image for now. Okay, I'll go to my pictures and I'll select an image which I'll upload. So as you can see, my image has been uploaded. Let me search for it. So this is the image which I have uploaded right now. 
So this is FTP server is basically for downloading and uploading files from your local machine to your local directory in the cloud. Once you have uploaded it, let's check out the file in the web console as well. This is the file which I have uploaded as you can see. So now let me take you to view. So I'll quickly sign in over here. Now we are inside Hue. So this is the SDFS browser. So you can click on SDFS browser. It will take you to SDFS. So as I told you, you can easily copy your files just using Hue. You don't have to write any CMD command. So here you can go ahead. You can use actions. You can rename a file. You can move a file. You can copy a file. You can change the permissions of the file. Then here you can upload the files so you can select files and then you can select the file from your local directory and you can directly upload the file to SDFS. Again you can create a new file or directory using these options and you can also select a file and then you can use move this trash option to delete the file. So are we clear guys how to use hue and delete files or upload file or create a new file in SDFS. I'm getting a question saying can we edit a file uh, using hue in SDFS? Yes, sure Thomas you can edit file in SDFS using hue just click on the file. So this is the file you can go ahead with this edit option which will actually help you to edit the file you can go ahead and edit anything in this file and then you have to choose this option as save or save as I'll go back you can also download this file you can use this file uh, you can actually view the file location. So I hope you got your answer Thomas. Thanks. Now let's quickly explore more options in your hue. So we have query editors. So you can use a Hive query editor, Impala query editor. You can use a Pig query editor. Then you can create dashboards and workflows over here. So let's do one thing. We'll go to Hive query editor. Let me open hue in one more tab so that I can show you some files. So let's go to SDFS browser. So let us go to this clickstream directory and we'll open this clickstream text file. So we have two columns. You can see one is user ID and the second one is the website. Okay, and this clickstream.txt file, I've created this a sample file to show you so how easy it is to write Hive queries using Hue. Okay, now let me show you the next file. So I'll go back. Navigate to user directory and then this is user.txt. So this is your again your user ID, the name of the user, the age of the user, then this is your country of the user and the gender of the user. So we'll use these two files. Now quickly I'll take you to the script. So my script file is script.q as you can see over here. So now let's go to the hive editor in hue. So this is the hive editor. Automatically it shows you all the tables on the left hand side that are present in your HDFS. So it's pretty much easy for you guys. You can directly target any table from here. You can see all those fields that are in there and you can also see the types of the fields like ISBN is string then year of publishing is end then title is string. So you can see each of the details over here which makes pretty much easy for you to target the table and execute queries over them. Um, over here you can easily write your hive queries. So let me copy my queries. So the first query is drop table click stream. So this is basically if I have any table already created in my hive called click stream. So it will drop the table first otherwise it will give me an exception or an error. So I don't want that then let me create the click stream table. So as we saw in the click stream table we have user ID that is end and then URL which is string and the delimiter is comma so I have specified the delimiter over here and I've given the location as dollar click stream over here so let me change this this is basically for my Uzi scheduler we'll see the Uzi scheduler in a while but before that let me specify the path so let's quickly go ahead and copy the path so it's slash users slash edu big data user slash click stream so to make sure uh, let me go with select start from quick stream. As you can see it provides you auto completion option as well. So it's easier for you to write those queries and let me execute it first to check that where the data is present in my click stream or not. So it will execute all the three queries and as you can see I have the data present in click stream over here. So it's loaded. So let me remove this select start from click stream query. And then we'll again drop the table user. So if any table name user exists in my hive, 
we'll drop it first and and then we'll load the table user from the hdfs so again the query is create external table user and then there are five fields that is user id which is int then name which is string then age which is again int then we have country which is string and then gender is string and then we are again specifying the uh, delimiter which is comma and let me change the location of the file so again the location of my file is slash user slash edu big data user and slash the directory is user so again i'll do the same i'll select star from user so let me quickly execute this query and let's see what we get so as you can see here we have got all the users that are present in the file now we'll perform a query let me copy the query first then i'll explain you the query so we are basically performing a join over here so insert override directory and then we are giving the output directory so let's remove this part because this is again for uzi scheduler then we are selecting url the count of the url which is again we are naming it as count one and then we are performing a join from user table and the click stream table based on user id so u basically represents your user table so u dot user id is your user id present in your user table and c represents your click stream table so c user id is the user id present in your click stream table and we'll group by url so let's quickly go ahead and execute this query so it will execute all the queries and then it will give me a result uh, i'm really sorry i haven't removed the select star from user statement so let me quickly go ahead and remove it and let me re-execute this query so now you can see we have url and the count so this is the url and the count is one then second url count is one again the third url uh, which has count two so it has given the count with all the urls so you can see how easy it is to write a hive query in hue you have all the tables listed down here you have all the columns of the table listed down here you have all the data types of the columns you can easily target those columns it has again auto completion functionality and you can easily execute it over here and you can see the result as well right so so this makes things pretty much easy for newbie to learn or for an experienced person to go ahead and execute those things and target those tables those columns so this is how hue makes the work simple now we have done this so the same queries are present in my script.q file as you can see i have copied all the queries from here the difference is instead of click stream file or instead of your user file i have given it as a variable right then again i have used insert over a directory where i am specifying the output variable now let me go ahead and show you how to create a uzi workflow using hue so it's very simple you'll go to workflow then you'll go to editors and create a workflow now let's click on this option create you can also import the workflow so what you have to do you have to select this hive server script and you have to drop it here and then it will ask for the script file so my script file is in my edu big data user and then my script is script.q so i have selected the script then i have to, to press on add i have three variables as i have shown you output clickstream and user so my first variable is output the path is again big data user so let me name it as output underscore new now i have to add one more parameter clickstream let me quickly copy the path and the directory is click stream again i'll add one more parameter for the user and i'll paste the path and we have user so i have specified all the three variables which i require that is output click stream and user and this is the path of my script file so i'll quickly go and i'll save it so here's the save option we have saved it but before saving let me edit the name of my workflow it's cloud lab workflow you can add a description over here as well let, let me show you the options so let me quickly again save it i've saved it then you can create a new workflow over here this option for sharing so you can go ahead and you can share the workflow as well then you have the workspace so this is the button to submit the workflow and it will execute the workflow so let us execute the workflow and we'll click on submit button so you can see the details over here the cloud lab workflow then edu big data user is the submitter 
then status is running progress bar it's 33 percent completed then this is the id of the workflow you can see the variables so let it execute first and i'll show you more parameters as well so it's completed successfully let me take you to the actions first so you can see the id of the workflow over here the name then type status is okay external id start time and then end time next is details so it will give you all the details related to your workflow when it is last modified what's the start time create a time then application path so as you can see the action path the action path is sdfs name service one which, which will take you to the sdfs and then you have user hue and then uzi workspace add a file next you have configuration so dry run is false job tracker yarn rm that is yarn resource manager then submitted by your edu big data user the name node so the url of name node is this as we just discussed then this is the lib path next uh, let me show you the log file so if you are getting any errors or exceptions you can check out the log file where you can see the errors and exceptions last we have the definitions so basically you have given the job in form of drag and drop and you have created parameters but internally it convert it into a xml file so if you're not using hue you have to write this xml file the whole script and then you have to save it to a file and then you have to execute it but as you can see using hue it becomes so easy that you just have to drag and drop some of the options and then you have to give some parameters and it will execute it for you again to verify those things i already executed it in a hive editor so i know that my script is working fine so then i created my workflow easily using the script file and then i specified some of the parameters and you can see how easy it is now now let's check the output we'll quickly go to the sdfs browser uh, let me take you to the output new and this is the file which is created and you can see the output over here right so this is how it looks it's very easy you can go ahead and execute it on large files as well editorica actually provides you real-time projects and with real-time large data sets where you can see all those complexities coming in and easily you will be able to tune all those parameters that's it for hue we'll go back to our cloud lab tab then you have Jupyter. So basically, Jupyter it provides your UI to edit those files present in your local directory. So let me open some sample file to show you how it works. You can go ahead and you can open this file. So nothing is present in the file. You can go ahead and you can write something in the file. Then you can use the save option to save the file. You can also create a file using Jupyter and you can write some text or you can write some code uh, based on your requirements. You can download that file. So you have all sorts of options present in Jupyter where you can easily use it as an editor for your cloud lab. Now let's go back and we'll see name node web UI. So it's almost similar what you have been using in your Apache or in your cloud era. So this is your name node web UI. You can go ahead. You can see the details, your live nodes, dead nodes, information related to your HDFS. You can find all this information over here. Then you can go to utilities and click on browse file system. So you can see all the files over here as well. So over here, you can again go ahead and see those files, download those files. But if you have Hue, you won't be using this option. It's basically uh, Hue provides you a much easier way to actually download or upload a file. Or you can say edit a file, modify a file, move a file in SDFS directories. All those options pretty much easy with Hue. Then we'll go to MapReduce job history server. So you can see all the jobs that are executed. Uh, so you have submit time start time finish time then job ID the name user which is executing the job You have queue then the state of the job is it succeeded or failed and total map tasks map tasks completed Reduce total and then reduce is completed. So now as you can see we have these two commands Executed by our user that is edu big data user and these two are succeeded. We just executed these two jobs when we executed our uzi workflow you can see insert override directory so, so this was a command which inserted the file in the sdfs directory so it makes easier for you to track your jobs and actually find the errors that you are getting you can look at the map task you can look at the configurations counters and overview so everything is present over here now let's go back here and again at last we have spark history server so if you are executing any spark job you can find the spark job over here again it's similar to your job history server you have application id application name started completed then duration then it gives you the spark user then it's last updated and the event clock if you are executing any job you can go ahead and search for it 
so that's it guys in cloud lab as you can see it's pretty much easy for you to go ahead and execute the programs the codes in cloud lab it gives you a real time experience and then you have a large data sets present in your cloud lab you can go ahead and execute problems over there and again you don't have to worry about the configurations as we just saw in our as you just saw in the vm we are facing a lot of resources issue because again if you are using cloud or manager you need to allocate them 8 gb of ram and 2 cpu but again it's not that much smooth as you want it to be but again while executing all those things in cloud app it's pretty much easier and smooth over here and you are getting a lots of resources you don't have to worry about resources it's just you need a system that is connected to net and you can access the cloud lab using your browser so let's get back to our slide but before talking about cloud era certification I like to tell you that Cloudera actually gives you CDH distribution or you can say CDH cluster to execute all those jobs or execute code in the CDH cluster to clarify these certification exams. So let's talk about each exam. So the first certification is CCA Spark and Hadoop Developer. The person clearing the CCA Spark and Hadoop Developer certification basically has proven his core skills to ingest, transform, and process data. Using Apache Spark and core Cloudera Enterprise tools. So basically, you have a time limit of 120 minutes, and the passing score is 70%. The price of the certification is 295 USD. Each CCA question requires you to solve a particular scenario, and in some cases, a tool such as Impala or Hive may be used. While in other cases, you you might need to uh, execute some codes. Basically, in order to speed up your development time, a template is provided to you that contains a skeleton of the solution. And then candidate has to fill the missing lines of functional code. Basically, your template is written in Scala or Python. So it is not mandatory to use the template. You may solve this scenario using a programming language. But however, you should be aware that coding every problem from scratch may take you more time than allocated for the exam. So the major skills are data ingestion, then you have transform, stage, and store. And then you have data analysis. So in data ingestion, you need to know how to import and export data from MySQL database to SDFS using Scoop. Then you have to change the delimiters and file formats of data during import using Scoop. You should know how to ingest real-time and near real-time data into SDFS. You also need to know process streaming data as it is loaded onto the cluster. You also should know the load data in and out SDFS using the Hadoop file system commands. Now talking about transform stage and store, you need to know how to load RDD data from HDFS for use in Spark applications. Then you should be able to write the results from an RDD back to HDFS using Spark. Then you also need to know how to read and write files in a variety of file formats. You also need to perform standards extract transform load processes on data. So these are the skills that are required for transform stage and store. Last talking about data analysis. So you need to know how to use meta stores table as an input source or an output sync for spark applications. Then you need to understand the fundamentals of querying data sets in spark. Then you need to understand how to filter data using spark. You need to write queries to calculate aggregate statistics. You need to join data sets using spark and you need to produce ranked or sorted data. So these are the important required skill sets for CCA spark and Hadoop developer. Now let's talk about CCA data analyst. So person clearing CCA data analyst certification basically has proven his core analyst skills to load transform and model Hadoop data in order to define relations and extract meaningful result from the raw input. The passing score is 70% and the language is English over here. So the required skills include prepare the data in which you have to extract transform and load processes to prepare the data for queries. It's almost similar to your CCA spark as we discussed then you need to know how to provide structure to the data where you have to use DDL that is data definition language statements create and alter structures in the meta store for use by Hive and Impala then you need to create tables using a variety of data types delimiters and file formats you need to create new tables using the existing tables improve query performance by creating partition tables in the meta store then you need to alter tables to modify existing schema and then you need to create views in order to simplify queries Next, you also need to know data analysis part in which you need to use query language statements in Hiver Impala to analyze the data. You need to prepare reports using select commands, include union and sub queries. Then you need to calculate aggregate statistics such as sum and averages. You also need to create queries against multiple data sources by using join commands. You also need to know how to transform the output format 
of queries by using built-in functions you also uh, might require to perform queries across the group of rows using windowing functions so these are these required skill sets in order to be a cca data analyst next we have cca administrator so in cca admin the code is cca131 so again where we have the time limit of 120 minutes the passing score is 70 percent and the price is 295 usd now again in cca131 the required skill sets are install where you have to demonstrate an understanding of the installation process of cloudera manager you have to set up local cdh repositories you have to perform os level configurations for hadoop installation you have to install cloudera manager server and agents you have to install cdh using cloudera manager you might be asked to add a new node to an existing cluster or you might ask to add a new service using cloudera manager you also need to know how to configure cdh so basically you need to perform basic and advanced level configurations you need to know how to configure a service using cloudera manager you need to know how to create a hdfs users home directory then you need to configure name node ha resource manager high availability then you need to configure proxy for hive server then you need to know how to rebalance the cluster so you need to know how to set up alerting for excessive disk fill you also need to define and install a rack topology script you need to install new types of input output compression libraries uh, you also might be asked to revise yarn resource assignment based on user feedback then you also need to know how to commission and decommission a node next you also need to know how to secure your cluster uh, like you need to enable relevant services and configure the cluster to meet goals defined by security policies uh, you also need to know how to configure hue user authorization and authentication you also need to enable and configure log and query rate reductions after the security part you also need to know the test part so in test part basically uh, you have to benchmark the cluster operations so basically in test part you need to benchmark the cluster operations based on metrics and test system configuration you need to execute file system commands via httpfs then you need to efficiently copy data within cluster between the clusters then you need to create or restore a snapshot from the sdfs directory you also need to know how to get and set acls for a file or directory structure you also need to benchmark the cluster next is troubleshooting so in troubleshooting you need to know how to resolve error and warning in cloudera manager you need to resolve performance issues or you can say performance problems in cloudera operation you also need to determine the reasons of application failure and you also need to know how to configure the fair scheduler to resolve application delays these are the required skill sets for all the three exams so first you need to be sure which of the certification you want to go for and then you need to align your training to the required skill set related to that specific certification so edureka provides you a structured training program which is in sync with cloudera certifications so you can go with spark and scala certification which is almost aligned with cca spark and hadoop developer or you can say cca 175 and then edureka admin program is almost similar to your cca administrator exam and cca data analyst is also covered in your cca spark and hadoop developer or you can go with edureka hadoop training where we are covering cca data analyst so that's it for today's session guys if you have any queries or if you have any doubts you can drop it in the uh, comment section we'll reply to you asap or uh, thank you and have a nice day i hope you have enjoyed listening to this video Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning!